This is Studio Life 10X, where I'm talking about life in the studio, music equipment, entertainment, with a goal of helping you achieve by giving you information that helps you to increase your beliefs in yourself while erasing fears and eliminating procrastination. Ultimately, I want to motivate you to make Studio Life a way of life. I'm DJ Hood Shaka, retired radio personality, audio engineer, professional studio owner, and home studio owner. And right now, I'm going to do something. Whew. Oh, man, it's getting ready to be crazy right now on Studio Life 10X. Look, I got to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, and chime in. You feel me? Tap in with me and let me know what's good. I'm DJ Hood Shaka on all social media platforms, so get familiar. I'm trying to explain compressors today. You understand what I'm saying? Woo, woo. And listen, some of the items used every day in a recording studio make sense on an intuitive level. The primary function of a microphone is to convert sound waves to electronic signals, right? The primary function of a preamp is to make quiet electronic signals louder. And the primary function of an equalizer is to change the sound of a signal by boosting or cutting specific frequencies. Of course, there's much more to it than that, but these are the generalizations. You feel me? You get the point. Now, then there's compressors and limiters and uh, devices who function, whose function is described in terms of fatness or the bottom or the edge. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? Hmm. Compressors. Yeah, compressors. So I just gave you some terms, but those terms don't really help you explain what a compressor does. So in this episode of Studio Life 10X, I'm going to explain what compressors do. A compressor's primary function is to reduce dynamic range. That's the difference between the loudest and the softest part of a track. Now, this is typically done by clamping down on the loudest parts of a track, you know, gain reduction, and then bringing up the overall level of the track through makeup gain. Now, through some compressors, they have controls for only those two actions. But it's becoming common for manufacturers to offer a little more control over other variables. So we get ready to talk about those variables, you know what I'm saying, and why they matter. You know what? I should have brought, I should have put my, I should have got an overhead camera and put my uh, DBX compressor in front of me. Hmm. You know what? That's what I'll do on the next episode. But right now we're going to talk about, we're going we're gonna to do the talk through. You feel me? Let's talk about threshold. Compressors allow audio signals to pass unaltered until the level reaches the threshold. Now that's the point at which the compressor circuitry starts reducing the gain. You feel me? Now, below the threshold, there's no change. But above the threshold, the signal starts being attenuated. Some compressors have a preset threshold, while others allow the user to choose whatever he or she wants. If the threshold is set to, let's say, a negative 12 dB, then any time the signal rises above a negative 12 dB, the compressor starts to reduce the gain 
by a set amount. And that's usually called a ratio. Hmm. So let's talk about ratio. The ratio is used to describe the amount of gain reduction that is actually occurring. So if a compressor is set to two to one ratio, the signal increased by one dB for each two dBs or decibels of gain above the threshold. So if a signal peak coming into the compressor exceeds the threshold by four decimals or four dB, the output of that peak will only be two dB louder than it would be if it was unprocessed. The gain is reduced, as you see, by two dB. If the signal exceeds the threshold by eight dB, then the compressed signal will be only four dB louder. At greater ratios, the amount of gain reduction is correspondingly different. With a four to one ratio, the output signal increases by one dB for each four decibels of signal strength over the threshold. In general, a two to one compression ratio is quite mild. A four to one ratio is moderate and an eight to one ratio is heavy. Ratios of 10 to one and greater are considered limiting. This means that the difference between a compressor and a limiter is the ratio. A limiter is a compressor that operates at ratios greater than 10 to one. So every limiter is a compressor, but not every compressor can be a limiter. Only those whose ratios can be set to 10 to one or greater. I hope this makes sense. I really hope that makes sense because I said a lot. Okay, so let's, let's talk about attack time. And reminding you on the next video, when I'm talking about compression, I'm gonna have this DBX 286S compressor and I'm just gonna walk you through it. I'm gonna show you my settings. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. But let's talk about attack time. The attack time is the time that it takes for the compressor to reach a preset amount of gain reduction once the threshold is exceeded. So if the compressor has an attack time setting of like 20 milliseconds, and trust me, that's a very slow attack time, then once the signal is higher than that threshold, it will take 20 milliseconds for the compressor to reach the full amount of gain reduction. The compression circuitry begins working as soon as the threshold is exceeded, but the attack time is kind of like the accelerator on a car. You know, even if you stomp on that accelerator, you know, exceeding that threshold, it, it's a delay. It takes a bit of time to get up to speed. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're trying to reach that desired amount of gain reduction. Let's talk about release time. The release time is the amount of time that it takes the compressor circuit to stop attenuating the signal after it drops below the threshold. With the release time set at 50 milliseconds, it will take 50 milliseconds after the signal drops below the threshold for the compressor to reach zero dB of gain reduction. Continuing with this accelerator metaphor, let's say that you're cruising at 70 miles per hour Taking your foot off the gas won't immediately bring you to a stop, right? It's going to take a while to slow down. You understand? Let's talk about makeup gain. Hmm. When the loudest parts of the signal are compressed, the result is that 
the signal is quieter. Now, makeup gain is used to bring the overall output level of the compressor back up. So if your compressor is on, then once you turn it on, then on average, it's reducing the peak levels by 5 dB. Then you can boost the makeup gain control by 5 dB to bring the output volume back up. You know what I'm saying? You can buy compressors with tube signal paths or solid state signal paths. And there's a number of different circuitry topologies to choose between. You feel me? So you could choose like VCA or tube. You ever heard vacuum tube compression? Ah, you know what I'm saying? Look, each of these designs have their own strengths and weaknesses and the different designs of compressors have i'm gonna call it like a sonic footprint you know they, they they sound sonically different you know but if you start by remembering the basic function of a compressor is to reduce the dynamic range of a signal then everything else, I promise you, falls into place and becomes a little less muddy. You feel me? Look, this right here is Studio Life 10X. I'm DJ Hood Shaka. You can feel free to reach out to me at DJ Hood Shaka at Yahoo.com. If you know a little more than me, then please leave something in the comments and hey, if I'm totally wrong and I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, then hey, you can explain it and feel free to be a guest because I see that you're a warrior just like me. We are on a continuous path for improvement. This is Studio Life 10X reminding you to commit to the full time studio grind. So do me a favor. I need you to stay focused, stay safe and support the hood. You feel me?